I did not expect to be recording a video at this time. Oh dear. Leeds United have lost Jed Spence. He has been sent back to Spurs. And the story is a little bit complicated. So I'm going to take you all the way through that and talk about what it means for the squad. And a little bit about the sort of reveal that's been mentioned by a few inside sources about who Leeds United's next right back could be. First up, Jed Spence has departed for Spurs. But as much as people initially thought that it was Spurs cutting off the loan... It wasn't. It was us exercising a clause that we had in the initial loan deal. Now, there's a few potential reasons for this. First of all is the fact he might not have been too happy at Leeds. He only had seven appearances at Leeds United. I'm going to have a quick look at his numbers now. Less than 400 minutes and over 26 matches. That is not enough for him to be happy with the amount of football that he was playing. And I would understand that. However, there is also word of rumours of unhappiness with his attitude at the club. I think Neil Warnock said similar when he was at Middlesbrough, said that if Jed Spence kept up the attitude that he had, he'd be playing no league, non-league in no time at all. And maybe that's the case with Jed Spence. You could see for a fact, like when he was playing matches for Leeds United and we needed to make changes, he was one of the first people to come off at every single opportunity. 60 minutes, 70 minutes. I don't think he managed a full 90 for us. I'll have a very quick check just to be 100% certain. No, um, 59, 67, 72, 77, 81 is the most minutes that he had in a Leeds United shirt at any point, which tells me that he didn't have the fitness. There are potential fitness issues with him. He was coming back from injury. But combined with the fact that he wasn't really bringing much more ability than Archie Gray was, it's easy to see why we let him go. If he wasn't fit enough to run for an entire match, he's always taking up a sub spot. If he isn't playing at the level of Archie Gray, you might as well play Archie Gray instead. And he's presumably taking up a hell of a lot of wages. He's not going to be a cheap player. He is ultimately a Spurs footballer that we've got on loan and will be paying a lot of his wages. The fact is we can reduce costs here. And if he's not contributing to the squad, he's not contributing to the squad. But when it comes to the squad, what does this mean? What does this mean for what we do throughout the rest of January? And I think there's a hell of a lot of news and things to discuss here. First up, this is something that I've not got a note for. It means that Archie Gray could see a hell of a lot more minutes than he was expecting. At the start of the season, we thought maybe he'd play a bit part. He could even start in midfield a little bit. But now he's playing almost every single match, which is probably not good for a 17-year-old's legs if we want him to have a very long career of good performances. It also reduces the chances of a move for Luke Ayling. There's been rumours around this. I haven't had a chance to do a video on it, but rumours of a potential move to Middlesbrough. I'm not sure if it's loan or permanent. I've been very busy the past couple of days. Sorry about that. But losing a right back means that the chances of another right back being sold are significantly lower. I think we'd need to sign someone completely new permanently before we let go of Ailing, purely because we wouldn't want to take a risk. And I feel a little bit bad for Ailing because he'll want to play football and he'll probably get that in Middlesbrough. That new lack of depth could be a very serious problem. Yes, Byram can play it right back, but he's needed on the left if Furpo gets injured. And we need another left back anyway. Like, I could see us having enough depth in theory, but I think we definitely need another right back and we couldn't afford to lose another one. However, it's been revealed. Some sources have been discussing the potential replacement for Jed Spence and how exactly we're going to get players in to make sure that we're not too weak in that position. And the name that's popped out is Connor Roberts at Burnley, a Welshman who a lot of people associate with being a winger, which confused me at first. So I had a little bit more of a look into it. He was previously a winger. He slid back into a more defensive role. And for 20 matches of the season so far at Burnley, he has effectively played as a right back or a right wing back. One match on the right of midfield, but not for too long. The good thing about this is he provides a strong defensive side while still attacking well. That means that he can bomb on down the flank, he can provide opportunities, he can work well with little bits of interchange with Dan James. That's another weird Welsh con connection. We've got so many Welsh players at the minute. We've also been linked with Kiefer Moore. It's bizarre. But combining strong defence with effective attack is ultimately what a modern wing-back needs to do. That's why so many current wingers will drop back and become defenders because they know they can do both bits of the job, especially if they can already tackle quite well. I mentioned, I think it was on the final word on Just Joe's channel, that a modern wing-back is functionally a midfielder. 
they effectively cut inside, slot in, and can play as a central midfielder, as a winger, all sorts, depending on the type of fullback that you've got. And I think there is not a problem with Connor Roberts coming into this squad because he is, in terms of style, effectively like a Luke Ayling. He's someone that attacks very effectively, but he's like Luke Ayling with the legs to get back. His strengths are he's very good at passing, holding onto the ball, concentrates and doesn't make too many major errors. So I think he'd be a big addition for a side, potentially looking for promotion, especially since he's been through this. He got promoted with Burnley last season. So I'm optimistic. In addition to that, Burnley are reportedly happy for him to join Leeds. It looks like there wouldn't be significant issues with forging a deal, whether that is a permanent deal or on loan. I think the wise thing to do there would be to do loan to buy if we get promoted, purely so we're not sort of stuck into having to buy him if we're not really feeling it when it comes to um, the summer and we've not gone up. But yeah, it's a tricky one. And because it's a tricky one, I sort of want to know what your thoughts are. I think I am feeling roughly positive about getting Connor Roberts in. I'm less good about Spence, but I've always been of the opinion that Daniel Farker is someone that sees a hell of a lot more of every single one of his players than we do. He sees them in training. He sees them in various sort of like theory sessions where they're watching opponents and seeing how to play against them. If Spence had the wrong attitude, then he didn't belong at Leeds, is the basic way of putting it. Roberts coming in, I think, will absolutely work out. A little bit worried about the minutes that it means for Archie Gray, but we'll see. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Like the video if you've enjoyed it, and subscribe if you haven't yet. That would be massively appreciated. I will see you later.